And one thing, uh, again, I admire that you never chose like a street life, like which a lot of people do with that type of situation that happens. Yeah. You never chose violence and you've seen violence. Yeah. You know, definitely. you've seen a lot of violence. What were the, like the conscious decisions not to go down that path? Welcome back to another episode of the Black is New New Rich podcast. Today we got a very special guest, but wait, if this is your first time, this is a podcast about entrepreneurship, lifestyle, mindset. So just letting you guys know if this is your first time tuning in. But today, like I said, we got a very special guest. He wears many hats. He's been through a lot in his life and he's made a lot of good decisions. But I don't want to keep talking. Introduce yourself. <laughs> well, first, thank you for having me on the show. A longtime friend, uh, somebody that I've known for probably close to 20 years now. Yes from what I can remember. But um, like you said, my name is Justin Allman. I'm a global basketball coordinator, an author, entrepreneur, businessman. I'm probably forgetting some other ones, but we'll get <laughs> yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, dope. So right now you are, are you still basketball training? You're still training? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You okay. have your own facility. Mm -hmm. You have uh, your rep team. Yep. You're still an author. Yep. A new father. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, somewhat newly married, somewhat. A yeah, couple yeah, years, yeah. A couple years in the... So you're doing it all. Trying to. I'm trying to just stay above water, you know? Yeah, yeah I feel you. Okay, so let's take it back. Uh, before we get into what's going on now, because I obviously I know you personally, and I know a lot of things that we've shared personally, but I want to share, not super detailed, but because I know you've been through a lot. So let's just take it back a little bit and... Let's start like where this journey started for you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say where it started. It's it's because it depends on who I'm speaking to and what I'm talking about. You know, True. there's so many journeys that I've had and that I'm going through currently. Yeah. So I, I think I would have to know. Let's start in Ottawa. Ah, uh, OK. Well, <laughs> Ottawa, Ottawa is where I was born. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I lived there for about the first eight years of my life. And from there, I moved to Toronto. Yeah. But funny enough, and when I was in Ottawa, I used to play hockey, never played mm -hmm. basketball, didn't even really know the sport. Basketball wasn't really a thing in Canada at the time. Hey, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Please remember to subscribe, comment and like. Black is the new rich. We're talking about the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I was hockey, a black hockey playing kid. Yeah. Growing up in Ottawa, moved to Scarborough. Nobody played hockey, started playing football and soccer and then just fell in love with basketball. And, and uh, that was it. That was it. Okay, dope. So, obviously, like, in your life, because I know personally, you've been through traumatic situations. And I've always admired it from afar, how you persevered through those type of situations. So, at an early age, you lost both of your parents. Yeah, yeah. And you had to persevere through that, through your whole life. How was that situation when you were younger? And how do you think about it now uh well you know i i, I can't say it ever gets easier because it never does you know yeah. um when you're younger it's a different type of hurt it's it's a hurt how, because how old are you four years old oh you're four yeah so it happened when i was four years old and yeah when you're younger it's a different type of hurt you don't really me losing them at such a young age i was four years old i don't i don't remember much about them you know true, what i mean true other than what uh my People aunts and you. uncles and stuff like that have been telling me or what i see through pictures so that's the type of hurt is just from the unknown. Mm. Um, now, when I'm older, it's it's the missing out part, like getting married and not having your parents there yeah. to, you know, walk you down the aisle or yeah. do that dance that you would do with your mom and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but other stuff, too, like every monumental moment in your life that you would think you would want your, you know, everyone want their parents to be at. Yeah. You just don't have them there. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it never gives you a break to stop thinking about what if they were here or if they were actually able to you know i could feel it right now too but if you were actually to have them there yeah true 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 so even growing up how did you like because it happened at four so like yeah. let's say like even through high school like did you harvest like anger or just complete sadness like how did you deal with those emotions because i know you always to be quiet and we've only had a couple conversations about yeah. the situation 
and you've handled it. You've always been like on the outside put together. So how did you like, what was your thought process on like handling it even in high school? Rough, man. It was rough. It, you know how they talk about um, there's thunder and there's lightning. Yeah. But both are equally as dangerous. When you see lightning, you know the thunder's coming or vice versa. So it's mm. it's more so like a quiet storm. So on the outside, everything looks calm and yeah. put together. Yeah. And on the inside, it's that battle that you're fighting. Like, how am I going to respond to this? How am I going to continue to move on? Again, you still have to go through things. Mm -hmm. Graduations, they're not there. Parent-teacher yeah. interviews. And sometimes you might not feel so secure or you know like you want to share all these details yeah. but when things like that come up the parent teacher interviews and uh you know teachers asking you oh you need to call your parents or saying mm, these things they don't know everything's that. a trigger you know what i yes, mean yes, everything yes. is a trigger and it's just i just felt like it was tough at during the time and for anybody else going through that kind of stuff it's it's, it's just a trigger and it's kind of tough for you to yeah go through that kind of stuff you know true and one thing, uh, again, I admire that you never chose like a street life, like which a lot of people do with that type of situation that happens. Yeah. You never chose violence and you've seen violence. Yeah. You know, definitely. you've seen a lot of violence. What were the, like the conscious decisions not to go down that path? <sighs> you know, for me, it was <laughs> like, what would what could I do? to make my parents proud, you know, in these moments. Like, again, we've all been, you know, stared in the face with those decisions. Mm -hmm. If you go left and you, or you go right. Yeah. Um, and during those moments, I always thought like, you know, people are always saying, what would Jesus do? And I used to wear that bracelet all the time. I remember. <laughs> yeah, right? Now I have it tattooed on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I just thought if I were to do this, would this be something that they're proud of? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And True. because I can't physically look them in the face and ask them those questions, I just try to make the best decisions possible that I think that would, you know, give them the most peace of mind or the ease of mind that I'm down here and I'm doing okay, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I always say, like, yes, we talk about financial literacy on this podcast, but before we can even, like, get our business right, we got to get our mind right. Mm -hmm. And for the last couple of years, like, I see that you've been getting your mind right, like, you know, like, just things that you've been doing. Um, how's that process been? Uh, well, it's funny you ask, because for me, it actually started for me when I got away from people, you know? What do you mean? What do you mean? And elaborate? I mean, like, well, I'm someone who really love who loves their solitude. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've gotten to that point now where you understand how important that is just for your mental and your your own mind and developing yourself. Right. So um, I was living in Brampton at the time. Not for long, but I was, living, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was living there for a few months, yeah. transitioning, yeah. you know, and I got this opportunity to go overseas. India. And exactly. Yes. Exactly. So I moved over there and I opened about five basketball academies. But while I was over there, my work process was kind of different from here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was different because I was on the opposite time zone of where we are here in Toronto, you mm -hmm. know, so I couldn't really talk to anybody from back home. I didn't have an iPhone either, so yeah. I wasn't in the group chat yet. I yeah, didn't yeah. see nothing. Yeah. All I knew is I was over there, nobody else I could talk to. So I kind of had to figure out what I was going to do mm -hmm. with all my free time. So I just got myself a library card. Yeah. And every single day I would go to the library, rent out books, and just read, read, read. And like I thought self-help books? or I never read anything that was not business related or yeah. Harvard material. Yeah. Everything that I read was, like you said, self-help or a business book or uh -huh. something to do with negotiations. Anything that I felt like could help me in a position once I get back home or even from where I'm, where I was currently at, yeah. I was reading that. Went through 12, 12 books in a month, mm -hmm. my first month, like thick business books, yeah. just tearing through them. Um, and that's when I realized, I was like, there's so much time in a day, but we waste it doing um, things that are so yes. unnecessary. But I felt like it was really a a Western world type of thing, you know, where you get caught up in Instagram or social media and all these sort. Uh, you, would sorts you say of things. like here moves a little bit too fast? Or would yeah. it seem that it moves too, too fast? It does move fast because it's a place where you're familiar. You mm -hmm. know, all your friends are here, your family's here. So there's so many different things happening all at once. Mm -hmm. And when I was there again, I was the only one on that time zone that I knew, you know, yeah. unless I'm talking to my family. Yeah. But still it would be 12 o'clock p.m here but it's 12 a.m there yeah and vice versa so my midday is when you guys are going to sleep true all i can do is teach myself or learn yeah so i taught myself how to do video 
taught myself how to do negotiations. I taught myself how to, you know, do Photoshop. I taught myself everything that I thought I would need for my business here. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, just locked in when I was there. And that's how I believe that, you know, the solitude and the self-help and all that kind of stuff is what helped me to get here, get today. here today. Yeah. Okay, dope. Hey, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Please remember to subscribe, comment, and like. Black is the new rich. So in our community, uh, I believe like therapy is like a taboo thing. Like people I've heard, like even some of my own friends be like, nah, I don't believe in that. Or some people like they may, they do believe in it. What do you think about it? And what advice can you give for someone thinking about going to go to therapy? I think, I think therapy is great, yeah. you know, but it, it, It doesn't always look like going and sitting down and talking to somebody, you know, who's a therapist. You have to develop or determine what your sort of therapy is. Oh, okay. Some people's therapy is like, you know, going for walks. True. Whatever can clear their mind. Some Mm -hmm. people is going on vacation on their own. Some people is reading books. But then there is that traditional therapy where you'd want to go down and, you know, talk to somebody and have them listen to your issues or problems and then help you navigate through through that, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I definitely agree that it's very valuable. I've yeah. done it myself. Yeah. How uh, long? Did I do it? Yeah. Well, when I was a child, I did it. Oh. When my parents passed away, I had to do it okay. then because I had anger management. So, yes. you know, I was an angry child. <laughs> yeah. So the calmness that you see yeah. now and okay. Comes a long that way. you know, yeah, it was crazy. Throwing mm-hmm. like the most that you could think about just yeah. causing problems. So did it from a young age, probably for about six months okay um and as i got older now i haven't really sat down and done it i found different ways and for me um when i was going to therapy at a younger age it was determined that i'm more of a i'm more of an introvert Mm -hmm. so i'm fine being by myself you know what i mean (laughs) so i could for me what works is i just need to be alone Mm -hmm. you know and anybody that knows me knows that if i'm alone for i don't know an hour a day or a week yeah. i'll be fine yeah you know yeah I mean? for sure it's when i'm out and about and i'm doing too much that i started to get agitated and then i got to kind of reset and do stuff like that but yeah i definitely agree that whatever form of therapy that you know you decide is for you then it's very important that you seek that help to get there did you do the traditional one as an adult as well i did the traditional one as an adult how's that process so my process yeah. was a little bit different because i didn't do it as an adult by myself Oh, okay. I did it with my partner. Okay, okay, right? okay. And this is, we did marriage counseling. This oh, is before we got married. True, true, true. But it shows you so much about yourself and that person that you're supposed to, you okay. know, get married to. Okay. But obviously, before before you get into your your partner, you got to, you know, Figure learn yourself. about yourself. Yes. So that's what they determined was really important. Mm-hmm. And I figured a lot of stuff about myself that I wasn't, not even stuff that we don't know. It's just that we're not willing to admit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Everything that you think is, quote unquote, wrong or an issue, you mm-hmm. already know because someone has told you this. Already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you but think you your perspective is right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, like, yeah. nah, it's just that person. I'm just not going to talk to that person anymore. But it's like, no, it's you. There's something about you that makes consistently that has people consistently saying you don't listen to me. You know, you don't hear me when I speak, or you know, I don't like how you talk to me. Yeah. It's something about us that yeah. that makes people say it. we just we're not listening to it. Yeah, yeah. So when you get the therapy now, kind of it sheds light to those things, so you can handle it a different way. Yeah, so it will shed light to those things. It's just gonna make you more aware. So now when I'm when I'm doing the things that I thought wasn't an issue, yeah, I'm aware of it. So I might say if someone says I don't like how or when you're talking to me or when I'm talking to you, sorry, you're not listening to me. Yeah. Now I'm aware of that now. I could mm. see the behaviors as to why they say that True. before I couldn't see it. I'm just like, yeah, I'm listening to you. Yeah. But my body language and my demeanor is not showing them listening to them. Mm-hmm. So on the outside looking in, I just look like I'm like this. Like, yeah. And to me, I'm chill, you yeah. know, but to them, it's like it's showing them I'm not listening. And yeah. realistically, I'm not. <laughs> I'm hearing what they're saying, yeah, yeah, but you're not listening. But I'm not listening. I'm just hearing what they're saying. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And sometimes we, we tend to get on the defensive side, mm-hmm. me especially sometimes. I can admit that now. Yeah. And a lot of the times I was hearing to answer. I just yeah. want to reply. You're just waiting. To them. You're just waiting for, yeah. time, for them. As soon to as they said one thing, I was like, okay, I'm stuck on that. I don't hear anything else. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, just yeah. waiting for my rebuttal so I can get right back to that point. Yeah. But now it's like, 
now I'm at a point where they can say all they have to say. I won't say a word. Yeah. And I might not even respond for a good five minutes because I want to process everything that they've said. Mm. And then, you know, process it internally. Think about it from my point of view, from their point of view, and then be like, all right, I'm ready to, you know, un- unravel everything that you just said. This is what I think. Yeah. I could agree with you or disagree. Yeah. But I feel like it's a better way to do it. You and know? these tactics you learned in. Therapy. Exactly. Exactly. Jeez, because I feel like once you can communicate um, like that, like the way you're explaining, like you just like you diffuse so much problems. In yeah. Your life. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. There's yeah. always going to be more problems. You yeah. know what I mean? But at least it's not going to be like bah, back and forth. You yes. know what I mean? And that's what I believe is important. Because now you're talking to someone with respect. True. Opposed to just talking to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And respect doesn't mean what you define as respect. It's like. What does it it mean? It means like, I have to understand what ticks you off. I have to understand what you think is respect. So if I speak to you in a certain way, I'm speaking to you because that's how I believe. That's how I communicate to you. But that doesn't mean that that's how I show that I respect you. You know what I mean? Like if you're telling me not to raise your voice and I'm my voice is raised, that means I'm not respecting you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or no matter what you think. Exactly. It doesn't matter the point, even though the points I'm saying could be correct. I am still not coming to you with respect because you've showed me how to speak to you. You showed me how you'd like to be handled and I'm not respecting that. Mm, You know what I mean? My boundaries. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter at that point what I'm saying, I'm still not respecting you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've grown to understand. Okay, dope, dope, dope. So I, I want to get into uh, Dream Chasers, and I have a little story, right? So Shoot. Dream Chasers is your brand. Yeah, right? yeah. And I, I remember when I was uh, working for you for a bit, like maybe like 10 years ago, I'm like, yo, bro, like, I think we should change the three Zs, right? Yeah. And now looking, you stuck with it. And now looking at where it's gone, I really respect that you stuck with your belief and did not crack because you had a vision that I necessarily didn't have. And so I just wanted to tell you that, like, yo, I respect that because, Appreciate it. you know, I remember I can admit that I was like, man, chop those three Z's off that <laughs> thing. Like, you well, know? you know what? I have a story about that, too. Yeah, I did. It's not like I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Originally, I didn't even want the three Z's. Mm-hmm. I wanted it to be Dream Chasers. And this is before Meek Mills, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah. Before Meek Mill came out with Dream Chasers, I... I had that. Yeah. For different reason. You know, yeah. what I, mean? I mean, probably for the same reason, yeah. but for a different, you know, game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So originally I wanted to have just dream chasers, mm-hmm. you know, tried it. Um, but when I went to go and incorporate it, yeah, I couldn't do it because someone else already had that name. So then I said, OK, I'm going to change the S to a Z. Mm-hmm. Put that one Z on there. Kind of looked tacky. I was like, all right, well, there's nothing else I can do. I like the name. Somebody else had it. Mm. Put a, a second one on there, and I was like, "Now nah, this is ridiculous." Now. You know what <laughs> I mean, like, what are we doing? Yeah. So I said, "You know what? How could I flip it where I could keep the name? I can't. I can't put three S's on it. It just looks weird with three S's, like, you know." So I said, "I have to put three Z's. Now it's gonna look like you're you know you're sleeping." Yeah. And at the beginning, I thought people are gonna sleep on this, but one day it's gonna become something big. Yeah. You know. And eventually it did. It did. It did. <laughs> you know? it so. did. Okay, dope. So, man, you h- how long has Dream Chasers been alive? And actually, no, for the people that don't know, explain what it is. So, Dream Chasers is my basketball training company. Um, we also have rep teams. We also we dibble and dabbled in fitness, but now we're expanding to a lot more different things. And I think we're gonna get into that. But um, we do internships, we do um, volunteer work. We do um, not-for-profit stuff. We do a lot of different things now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, dope. So recently, over the last, what, year or so, you got your facility. Yeah, yeah. And it's a full-court basketball facility, mm-hmm. right? So let's talk about that. What was the thought process getting that? And how do, like, let's say I want to, like, you know, get a basketball facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, are, what's, what should I look out for? Snakes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, joking. I'm not joking. I am joking. All right. So um, elaborate. So, elaborate. No, because whenever you're going to do something, you know, um, and anybody has a good idea, yeah. you're probably not going to be the first one with that idea. For you sure. You know what I mean? But um, what I mean by that is just look out for good business tactics. You always want to make sure that if you're going to go into business with somebody, that it's somebody that you know, somebody that you 
researched well and somebody that you trust. Yes. You know, like if you had to step away from that business, do you have full confidence in that person being able to be there while you're not there? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. On the day to day, on the ground running and being able to fully keep it going while you're not there for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't answer all three of those things, I don't think that would be a good business partner. You know what I mean? But um, basically what had to go into it is. Um, well, our backstory, I really wanted to have my own facility probably about five years into me starting Dream Chasers. Yeah. And I really wanted to do that because I felt that I was I had a lot of clients and I was doing a lot of work, but I was too much running around the city. Yeah. Yeah. You know? All these different gyms. Yeah. I had like 12 different gyms in Mississauga. Yeah. 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 And Brampton and Etobicoke and all these different places. Um, and as much as I was doing, I felt like I can do more if I just had it at one stable location, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, when you're at these gyms, you got permits, mm -hmm. you only get two hours a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was doing a lot in two hours, but what more could I do if I was maximizing that and had 24 hour access? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, I had the idea of getting the facility. It was just trying to go out there and look for a spot. Yeah. You know, it's difficult because you need a spot that has high enough ceilings. You need oh, to be yeah, wide true. enough so that you can have, you know, sidelines and all these sorts of things. Yeah. And then you then you also have to think about, OK, is it just a basketball court that I want or do I want to eventually expand? What else can I do? How many hoops do I want in there? Mm -hmm. What type of flooring am I going to put in there? Mm -hmm. Is this supposed to be, you know, for NBA or WNBA players? Is it, is it going to service youth? Because now you have to determine, you know, the type of floor. Do I need hardwood? yeah for the nba guys or wnba players or could i just use like a concrete surface yeah you know um so once you determine all these things that's kind of going to give you a blueprint of how you should build out your process mm -hmm. um and for me i wanted something that would be that would replicate like a nba practice facility true you know so i want to be an all-in-one type of thing where i could pluck this wnba player or this nba player uh, from their in practice environment and say come to my facility and, and there's no difference yeah, exactly yeah yeah because yeah. a lot of times i brought nba or wnba players places and they're like ah, i don't know about this floor you know what True. i mean like and then you could lose a client mm -hmm. or i don't know about hmm, the ceiling or it's a little bit too low when i shoot i gotta change my shot because yeah I, it's too it's gonna hit the ceiling you yeah. know what i mean or this workout was great but i gotta go and do fitness now mm -hmm. why wouldn't i have it there to keep them there yes or the workout was great on court fitness is great i gotta go do physio now oh no don't worry i got that here too <laughs> yeah, yeah oh that's yeah. great i'm really hungry oh we got that too don't worry about that uh, you know what i mean like you want to keep them constantly there as much as you can yeah yeah and yeah, i yeah. just feel like that would that was a that's how the business should go in terms of yeah you know retention and keeping more of your money in-house okay cool. you know what i mean so Obviously, right now, like basketball gyms are coming out left, right, and center. How do you even compete with all those? Well, that's the thing. I don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Wait, elaborate. What do you mean? I think that I've grown more when I decided that I was going to stop competing with other people. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. what they're doing has nothing to do with me. Bars. <laughs> it has Bars. nothing to do with me. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. I see it? Of course I see it. I'm not blind. Yeah. But has it made me lose track of my vision? No, it yeah. hasn't. Mm -hmm. So I think the key is sticking in your lane, figuring out what you want to do and stop trying to compete with other people mm -hmm. who happen to be in the same field as you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're all in the same field. I'm, I'm, I can't stop anybody from building a basketball facility or gym or any of these yeah. things. But what I can do is try to focus on what I'm doing and try to say, how could I make it better for what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If people are going to the other gym, why are they going to the other gym? Why don't I have what? something set up here? That, so that they, they wouldn't have, have to. to go there. You know what I mean? True. But um, I think, again, the moment that I lose sight in the vision that I've had, yeah. that I've had for years, and start thinking about what they're doing and competing with them, mm -hmm. I've already lost. True. I've already lost. I like that. I like that. So with your gym, right, do you have only Dream Chasers branded stuff coming in there? Or do you have, like, how do you do that? Do you have other, like, let's say, like, community centers have kids coming in there or the school, high schools coming in there? Like, how do you do that? Uh, well, I mean, I like to always say that we're, ex we're inclusive of everyone. Okay. But we're exclusive. If that, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> you get, you get what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. But you got to be part of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so when you come in there, you're, you're a dream chaser first. Yeah. I don't want you to come in here wearing any other gear. If yeah. you're in any other club gear, 
change it before you come inside yeah, there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not saying that it's not welcome there. We train other teams there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Even though we have rep teams there, but it's like you're here, Dream Chasers training, then mm-hmm. let's focus on that. Plus we have people come in and do video and do all sorts of things. And it's no offense to anybody, but we're not branding other people here when True. we're there. You True. know what I mean? True. Our logo's in the floor for a reason. We want to see everything being cohesive mm-hmm. because we're talking to other brands and when they see this stuff, this is what they like. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This is what they want to see. Yeah. Especially with some of the partners that I have um, currently, which mm-hmm. is which is branding my my stuff. True. They want to see it actively being used. True. So again, anybody can come in there from the community, but I want to make sure that they understand that when they're in there, they're part of us. If they want to go somewhere else and wear our gear there, by all means. Yeah. But our standard for what we set is a little bit different okay. than other places. Okay. Okay. And how do you scale a business like this? Like where you're not on the court training so much, where you can have free time with your daughter. How do you scale it up? Um, You know what? I'm still working on that. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. done it. I've done it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm currently doing it, mm-hmm. you know, but it's something that I've been thinking about for years to come. Mm-hmm. I'm already 10 years in the game plus, you True. know what I mean? Yeah. So I never, I never wanted to be doing training for the rest of my life. Okay. I don't want to be the best trainer. I don't want to be the most liked trainer. I don't want to be any of that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be a businessman and want to spend time with my family and loved ones. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So with that mindset, um, obviously I have to establish my company and my brand and everything like that. So that, that, I needed to be in the trenches for 10 years. Nice. I needed to to build that brand. I need to do that and show face and do all those things. And I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but being able to scale now is empowering other people, mm-hmm. understanding that you can't even grow your brand without other people. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. If you if, if it's just you, that's not a brand. Yeah, it's not a brand. It's not a brand. You just work. You can't be the company. only one <laughs> rocking. <laughs> If Nike was the only person, you know, Phil Knight was the only person rocking Nike, that's not a brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, It's yeah. just you <laughs> wearing your old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, um, I understood that I need to um, um, empower other people, mm-hmm. you know, other people who want to to do training and want to do other things that are within the company that we have. You okay. know what I mean? And I see them all as equal. I don't, they don't work for me. We work together. True. You know what I mean? And okay. I feel like a lot of people are out there power tripping yeah for sure for but sure. really it's not about that yeah everybody's coming to you or whatever the brand is because they want to get something out of it yeah whether that is just getting paid whether that is building the brand whether that whether that is helping to build their own brand mm-hmm. sometime in the future mm-hmm. everybody's there for a reason mm-hmm. and once you understand the reason it makes things more easier so now i could help you mm-hmm. you know but if everything's a secret and say you came to work for me and i don't know what your ulterior motives are sure. I, there's no way i could help you because sure. I'm under the impression that you're there just working. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you're same thing. I mm-hmm. can't feed into you. You can't feed into me. Now we're just two bodies in the same building yeah. working, yeah. not helping the brand, not helping yeah. your vision, not helping anybody. Yeah. And then we clock in, we Wasting clock time. out. <laughs> exactly. So again, I just think empowering it, figuring out what those people who are around you mm-hmm. or in your circle need and what they want to do. And then also helping to build them in any facet that they're yeah. trying to get to. Yeah, I always say like good business is helping other people and exactly. uh, and helping other people first. Like you know, paying attention to what they need, exactly and attending to what they yeah they need. yeah yeah. Um, just quickly, like what are some brand tips that you would have for uh, people building up their brand? Well, actually, <laughs> now that you talked about this, I can't give them all out because I do have a course coming out. Okay, lit, so I have lit. a I have a course that you can purchase. Yeah, coming out soon. Right. <laughs> um, so I can give you all the tips, but um, what I could say is one tip: figuring out what it is that you truly want to do. Like, let's say you want to be a podcaster, mm-hmm. right? Why? Mm-hmm. What is? Why do you want to be a podcaster? You know, I always ask that question: Why is it that you want to do what you're doing? Yeah. If you can't answer the why, then you can't there's no way that you can move forward True. so for me when i decided i want to be a trainer i had to discover what my why was mm-hmm. and my why to be in a trainer wasn't because i wanted to be the best trainer in mm-hmm. the world or in mm-hmm. toronto or in canada or in any of these things yeah. it was because when i really dug deep it was because i wanted to help people mm-hmm. i stopped playing basketball i had pro contracts don't yeah. don't ever get that twisted <laughs> i have plenty of them yeah 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 but Again, you know, with my unique circumstances growing up, I didn't have support. Yeah. And in a time where we were coming up, it was, it was like there was no NBL. There was no CEBL. Yeah, it was like, it was you need to go overseas. 
or the NBA. Yeah. I wasn't going with, to the NBA. With, with and if I was going overseas and I already, if you guys didn't know, I didn't live at home. Mm -hmm. So if I went overseas and I came back, I'd lose everything that I had here. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it was yeah. an all or nothing type of decision. At the time, I decided I'm going to start my business, which mm -hmm. is a smart decision for me. As I was doing my business, as you said, my why, I discovered that my why was to help people. And I, I felt like I could do that the best way by mm -hmm. reaching more people through my business as opposed to just developing myself as a basketball player. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trying to be selfless instead of selfless. So Jeez. that's how I discovered my selfless why. Selfless instead of selfish? Selfless. Okay, okay, okay. I was trying to be, what did I say? <laughs> you caught me <laughs> yeah, off guard yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I said I was trying to be selfless, selfless instead, instead of, of selfish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, exactly. that was it. Yeah, I bet. Because it's, you know how it is. Like, if you're trying to be a ball player, you're in the gym, you're grinding, you're working yeah. on your stuff. When yeah. you're a basketball trainer or an entrepreneur, you got to be thinking about other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the more that I moved around the world to all these different countries, I was able to help like 300,000 people in this world yeah. that I never would have met. Facts. I never would have put a ball in their hand and got them on their basketball journey or anything like that, you know? Facts, so facts. that was my why. And that's why I said now, like, if I don't ever become the best trainer or this or that, that's okay You're with okay. me. Yeah, yeah, that's okay yeah. with me because there's so many other facets in my life that I've been able to impact people and help them get to where they want to go. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So. Okay. Dope. So let's talk about partnerships and sponsorships. You are sponsored by Adidas or is it a partnership? Well, it's both. Okay. Let's explain that. So I have a partnership with Adidas. Yeah. For a long time now. Yeah. yeah. So going on three years now and it's yeah. two things. So just now I'm in myself. Yeah. Um, that's my partnership. Okay. Um, and Dream Chasers is my sponsorship. To so so. So for explain me. That. So for me, I'm signed under Adidas myself. Okay. Um, and my company is sponsored by Adidas. Okay. So what that means is because i'm um so my partnership is adidas so i do commercials i do you know a lot of outreach stuff for them yeah all that stuff that you see out there in the media that's our partnership true and now my sponsorship is where adidas supplies all of dream chasers uh gear they put me on this sorry they put dream chasers on the pedestals they supply their gear they supply their basketballs they supply everything for dream, dream chasers, chasers as a company Oh, okay. you know what I mean? So that's how we do it. Okay. So for brands coming up, what are your first steps to get these type of partnerships and sponsorships? Well, I, uh, to be honest, I feel like you got to be organic and just be who you are. Okay. Brands like that okay. because they don't have to, they don't have to train you to be a certain way. Okay. They're going to approach you because they already like who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I so mean? So did they find you or you contacted someone? No, no, no. They found me. Okay. Um, they found me um contacted me through email yeah and my dms first and then email yeah took me out for lunch we chopped it up talked about all the things that they seen in the future yeah for me but they also talked about things that i'm currently doing and how they liked how i was in the community already okay. you know what i mean and okay that was a very big thing for them so um once we decided or figured out that we were aligned and on the same page it was mm -hmm. a natural match okay and i felt like you know um, I mean, other company, other companies have approached me in the past. Yeah, and I've done work with them. No need to mention them; they're not relevant now. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. done work with a lot of different companies, um, and they just didn't offer me the same things as Adidas. Adidas. And I'm not even talking just financially. I'm talking more of like, impact. you know, as impact. And mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest thing because the money is always going to come there, but True. the impact is what is most important to me. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to do things with you know Black Lives Matters and even most recently caravana and like oh, adidas yeah. feels like that. they have their hands on everything yeah you yeah, know what yeah. i mean they're, they're in the touching culture. they're in the culture exactly and i'm in the culture so i felt like it was a perfect match perfect match okay dope bro so what do you see next with dream chasers well um or what are you working on Can i'm working on something? a lot of things i'm working on a lot <laughs> of things right now. so i am working on one i'm working on my second book right now yeah okay dope um, I kind of had to stop that after my daughter was born, but I'm still, I'm yeah. almost finished writing the second book, which mm -hmm. is the sequel to Before My Glory. Yes. You can still pick that up on Amazon, guys. So. Gang. I'll plug that in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but that's one thing. Two, I'm working on that online course that I touched on a little bit earlier. True. Um, yo, I'm telling you, we'll talk after. after yeah, and about that. what yeah. that's going to, 
be teaching people this is, there's there's two courses within the course so yeah. you could choose your route yeah um and go from there but a lot of it is on entrepreneurship and how to get started true um and then there's a, also a trainer aspect of it um if you want to do what i've done yeah um, i'll show you how to do it Dope. you know so for all you trainers out there who are looking to you know build your brands and get yourself out there then there will be a course so stay tuned <laughs> yeah. um but also um who knows i might i might i mean i know but yeah. <laughs> working on something out in la too yeah um maybe another facility okay yeah so that's not maybe that's definitely in the works true should have opened this year but things happen yeah 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 babies being born stuff like that so mm. by next year we'll probably have another facility yeah could there. you see yourself having like multiple multiple facilities like maybe like 10 15 huh, i don't <laughs> know about that much i don't <laughs> yeah, want yeah. that much problems yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. You know, I still want to be like, it's one thing to have all these things, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But I still want to be able to have my hands on all of them. Sure. Not that I don't trust people with it, but again, it comes back to that impact. People want to see you there. Yeah. People want to know that. Where the brand came from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, oh, Justin, he still comes here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm never, you never want to be too big to show your face at your own, sure. at your own place. You but know look, I mean? let me play God's advocate. Look, look at someone like Phil Knight now. No one, these young boys don't know who Phil Knight is. They don't. They don't. But right. uh, that's different though. I okay. feel like that's a little different. Okay. Because. How so? I think, again, I don't know what his impact was. Yeah. He's, he's, he uses other athletes to create that impact. Which you could do. Which I could do. And but you do do. I do. I do yeah. do that. But he's not He's not that impact person. You know what okay, I mean? Like yeah, yeah. He's the person who's created it. Yeah. And Kobe, Puts Michael Jordan, and LeBron, and all these guys are the people. Like, we don't think about Phil Knight when we think about Nike. Nike. Yeah, we think about Jordan. We, we think, think about, about Jordan, Kobe, Kobe LeBron, LeBron, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's why they don't know who he is. Yeah, facts. And I'm not saying that everybody needs to know who I am. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's important for me to know who they are. Ooh. And that's that's the difference where he doesn't and I can't speak for Phil, but yeah, he doesn't get to know these people. You yeah. know what I mean? It's the Jordans, the Kobe's and the LeBron's who get to be there on the ground level to know them. True. OK, I want to be on the ground level to still hear little Johnny's story or whoever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if I do, if you do too much or you have too many things going on, you kind of defeat that purpose of of it. I'm not trying to be a billionaire. Yes. I'm just trying to be well off. Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. OK. So you mentioned new daughter, yeah, new yeah. father. How's that been? How how old is she now? Well, she's six weeks. Six uh, weeks. About to be seven. So about to we're, be we're seven. approaching that two month mark. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it been so far, bro? What's what's new? What's changed? What surprised you? What's good? What's, what's changed? What, what's like? Oh God, this is hard. Shoot, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Every firstly, yeah. do not do the crime if you can't do the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> If you're not ready, yeah. and I don't think you can ever be ready. Like yeah, we yeah. try to be ready as much as we can, but yeah. the first one is a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. And literally, like I'll tell you a quick story. Like I don't know if you got if you know this restaurant called Fresh, fresh. not Freshy, Fresh. No, no. So it's a vegan spot. I don't mm. eat meat. Um, so I was out there. You know, I did I did Uber Eats pickup delivery. I go inside there. Yeah, it's a frequent spot that I go to, um, and they have like a counter right beside. The delivery counter or pickup counter right there beside the door. Mm -hmm. So I go, I pick up my food, and I'm exhausted. This is like three days after she was born. Yeah. No sleep. My eyes are bloodshot red. Yeah. I pick up my food, and I'm in a rush to try to get home so I could eat and then go back to watching her, you know? Give the wife a little break. I pick up the food. <laughs> I'm blitzing towards the door. It's a glass door. I knew that the door was there. I've been through that restaurant like yeah. 30 times. But because I was so tired, I was like, that's not a door. It's probably already I open. I s steam lined right into that door, smashed my face on the door. I could see my lips and the grease and everything on the door. <laughs> and I fell backwards. The drinks, my food, everything splattered all over the ground. Everyone in the restaurant's like, oh my God, are you okay? Yeah. I looked up, I panicked, and I ran out the store. Yeah. Then I had to reorder the food and just made them deliver it. Oh God. Like, it's so exhausting. Yeah. It's literally so exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Especially like, you know, she's sleeping a little bit more now, but mm -hmm. a lot of people told me, do not take sleep for granted. I didn't listen. Yeah. But I'm telling you guys again, do not take sleep for granted. Yeah. I mean, granted, you are going to get exhausted regardless because, you know, they're going to wake up every every hour and a half or to two hours because they have to eat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Stomach yeah. is so small. They got to eat so often. Mm -hmm. But 
it's been different in the sense that obviously one you're tired but two you know it's very rewarding Mm -hmm. you know because all the ways that or all the things that you thought that you were doing right as you were growing up Mm -hmm. you can kind of guide that person now Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like there's no manual Mm -hmm. like i could tell you one thing but you're on your you're already an adult yeah so you're in your ways already i have to show her the way now yeah yeah you know what i mean programming exactly it's it's on me now to try to get this right so that when she grows up she's like oh my dad taught me that so now i can't do that yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean i see so many people now including myself who you know you didn't get that when you were younger for whatever reason sometimes Mm -hmm. your parents didn't know or your parents or guardians or whoever didn't know Mm -hmm. because no one taught them but we're at the generation where there's we so know many. now. Yeah. We and, have internet and there's access. Informa- we yeah, have there's, yeah, there's inter- information have, out there. Exactly. Yeah. So now there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I just want to make sure that I'm there as much as possible, which is why I was telling you I haven't really went to my facility since July, July 5th. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to miss those crucial stages. And yeah. even though she can't speak right now, she's very inquisitive. Like I see her look around. I see her stare at things. I see her do all these things. And it's every day is like a new challenge. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. I think it's important for myself to just be there as not only just a black man, but a black father, but mm-hmm. as any father should be in their, their child's life. Yeah, facts. But there is one thing I did notice and I, or I did kind of, my mindset kind of, you know, took change, took change. And I said to, I was talking to someone, I was like, you know what? I understand now why a man would run. In a situation like this, I get it. Mm, why, I get it. Why? Why? Explain because, that. Elaborate. Because it's hard. Yeah. It's like this is the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Mm-hmm. And I've done some hard things, but this. Yeah. This could break a man. Yeah. <laughs> and not just a man. I mean, I could understand why a parent could would run from this situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, as a man, I I looking at the mother and looking at the child, I don't see how anybody could ever do that. Mm. You know what I mean? So I could see both points of view but for me personally i could never do it but i could see why someone would do that mm-hmm, because it is that. hard yeah 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 yeah. but again you got to think about what life you want for that child what life you want for that child's mother what life you want mm-hmm. for yourself mm-hmm. and you put your you you put yourself in that position so it's only natural that you got to step up take and, care and take care of your responsibility okay you know what i mean dope dope so when it's all said and done what type of impact do you want to leave you know, it's always a tough one. <laughs> yeah. I just want to leave an impact where people understand that there's never an excuse for not being who you say you want to be. Mm. You know, like a lot of people complain. Mm-hmm. Everyone complains. Mm-hmm. But one thing you're not going to hear about me is the complaining. Mm-hmm. So like I've, I've, I've come up around a lot of people and I hear a lot of complaining all the time. But I try my best not to be one of those people because yeah. I understand like for me growing up without a mom, without a dad, mm-hmm. without a lot of different things, you mm-hmm. know, complaining never got me anywhere. Mm-hmm. I remember as a kid, you know, I was like five years old. I used to cry all the time. My mom's not here. My dad's not here. And it sucks. Mm-hmm. But I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, you're so ugly when you cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. I, yeah. And that was the day I was like, this is not going to help you. Yeah. I literally said this. I was like, I, I must have been like five or six. Yeah. In Ottawa, my downstairs basement, there was a, a washroom there. I was sitting on the counter just crying. Yeah. Crying. And then I just, I was cool. like, let's go. This is not going to help you mm-hmm. do something. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was from that point on where I was like, whenever you feel these ways, try to do something productive. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's goes back to the sense where you're talking about choosing right from wrong. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that's not going to help me. Yeah. It's never going to help me. So why would I do that? Yeah. It's only going to put me in a position where now I'm going to need help from somebody else or I'm putting myself, I'm putting myself down and putting my family back and putting whatever it is, you know, that my goals are out of the picture. So I would say, um, never make an excuses, no matter what your circumstances are, Mm -hmm. somebody else has done it. And why can't you? Dope, dope, dope. That's deep. So here's a question that I ask everybody on the show. And you don't have to say any names, but what is the best advice that you've gotten? And what's the worst advice that you've gotten? Best advice I've gotten. Is keep going. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's the best advice I've ever gotten. Just keep going. Two words, keep going. Because I feel like that applies to everything in life. You Mm -hmm. know, whether you're doing great 
keep going. There's always better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're, you know, if you're down and out, you just got to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know if it was Kobe that said it, but he probably <laughs> said it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say that's the best advice because that's gotten me through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I said, whether it's bad, or it's good, mm -hmm. drama or trauma, mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. um, worst advice? Worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> there's been some bad advice there ah what is the worst advice i got probably you don't gotta like what you're doing and this is twofold yeah it's good and bad okay you don't gotta like it but you gotta get it done bro elaborate and I mean, there's always going to be instances. I'll, I'll talk about the worst first. Mm -hmm. No, you do have to like it. Mm -hmm. If it's not something that you like to do, don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's Because what you're never going to do it properly. Exactly. You're never going to do it to the extent that is somebody who's trying to perfect it and master it, who yeah. likes it. Yeah. So don't do it. Mm -hmm. And that's me. Like, if I can't do it to my standard, I don't want to do it at all. That's how I feel about it. You know what I mean? Things. And that's yes. why I feel like that was probably one of the worst advice because I've tried things that I don't like mm -hmm. and it's been a disaster. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but then again, there are going to be things in life that you don't like. Mm -hmm. You got to get done. Like obviously, you know, working out, yeah, or, yeah. you know, doing things that improve your health or going to school to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, those things. But I'd say that's the worst advice and the best advice is obviously keep going for me. Okay, dope, dope. So on this show, we like to make predictions. So I'm going to play this back in five years. And I'm like, yo, Justin did say he was going to do that. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years, I have another facility in LA. Okay. Um, I'll be traveling, back to traveling all around the world, which I... Lit. Yeah. More kids. More kids. <laughs> um, but I won't necessarily be training. Mm -hmm. I'll be just overseeing. Yeah, I'll be overseeing. Run the operations. Run the operations. Um, and managing. Okay. Managing clients, athletes, mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff of that nature. Okay, dope, dope. Uh, before we go, uh, let everybody know where they can find you. If you're looking for me personally, you can find me on Instagram, Justin Alleman. So it's at Justin Alleman. You plug in the spelling. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for my business, you can find them at dream.chasers and that's D R E A M dot C H A S E triple Z. Don't sleep on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Well, you know, I appreciate you coming through and I just want to say like, honestly, like I've admired your journey from afar. You've been doing your thing and, uh, keep going. Cause I seen you, I seen this from the start, you know what I'm saying? And like it, for, to what it's becoming today, it's crazy that it's been yeah, already yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Cause I remember even training with the dream chaser shirt on, you know, and it's 10 years. So, uh, cheers to another 10 coming. Absolutely. Appreciate you having me come out. Um, and I know nobody asked you this, but where do you see yourself in five years? Honestly, uh, the podcast is the small goal. The network is the big goal. So I want mm. something like Revolt TV. I want to have shows, podcasts, and all types of media under Black is the New Rich. Love it. Love it. Love you it. You know, so five years, that's where it will be. I want to I want to be the biggest just network Canada has ever seen. Ever. And that's it. You know I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's another episode of the Black is the New Rich podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, before you... Turn this off. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Done. <laughs> yes, sir. Everything black on black. If I study that facts on facts.